There are so many set like like uh, when when they're in the elevator there, and and Kirk's like, I could really use a shower. And Spock's just yeah. like, Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Shoot you the fuck you down and use the shower. You, William Shatner. <laughs> I, Leonard Nemo, I believe you, William Shatner. Before we act more in an elevator together, you need a shower. Are you are you fishing for smell compliments? No, not happening. Stop saying cut, Gene. I don't care. Keep it in the movie. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it hasn't occurred to us not to. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who's a lot like Miles Davis? I No, I have no idea. Bill Shatner. He is <laughs> okay. the Miles Davis of talking. I get it. And I... Love it. Right. I love it. I love Shatner talking. Awesome. Yeah. Pauses work great. And sitting 900 <laughs> miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. William Shatner made it onto God Awful Movies, and I've never been happier. It's about fucking time. <laughs> yes. And of course, also joining us tonight, we have a special guest masochist, the host of the Queer Splating podcast, Callie Wright. Callie, welcome back. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, and I've loved Star Trek my entire life, and this whole thing feels so incredibly wrong to me, but I'm doing it anyway. So. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We had to bring in a special guest Trekkie, right? Like, we, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, I watched some Star Trek. Eli's a little bit of a Star Trek fan. Not really sure about Heath so much, but but we needed an actual genuine Trekkie, so you were the first person we called. Gosh, I appreciate that. That makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> or bad about myself. <laughs> All right, so obviously we've hinted around about it uh, quite a bit, but tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. I think the V is about the necks of most of the universe. <laughs> and it's the story of uh, the Heaven's Gate cult, but in space instead of suburban California. Yep. <laughs> so, fun times. Yep. Yes, it is. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love Star Trek, but you hate to see all that B-roll go to waste, you will love this movie. This movie is less Star Trek and more Star Slog, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so given our audience, I feel like we should sort of establish our relative levels of Trekkiedom before we go any further. And I'd like to do that from most Trekkie to least. I believe that starts us with Callie, correct? The Mushra. <laughs> 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 Were you speaking trickies? <laughs> no, Klingon. Klingon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> oh, sorry. Obviously, it's fucking Klingon. Go fuck everybody. <laughs> I'll go last, apparently. So, go ahead, <laughs> Sally. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek's been like one of the most important things in my life since I was a kid. So I'm really excited to be tearing it apart today. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> right on. And Eli, I believe you come in second, right? I'm not much of a Trekkie myself. Yeah, I've seen all the good shows and a few of the bad ones. Okay. And I'm not going to say which is which because I want my Twitter <laughs> to survive 2020. <laughs> or I'll fucking kill you because I'm going to be at your house next weekend. So. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. All right, so here's the thing. I was never really a Star Trek fan. I, I watched The Next Generation a little bit. My dad was a big Trekkie. My sisters were both big Trekkies. I, I went to, like, one or two conventions. So, like, I've observed Trekkies in their natural environment and stuff. I was just never one of them myself. I feel like I could make it from one. Like, I could, I could like... You know, whatever, I could be a spy that pretended to be a Trekkie for a day. I think I could make it through that, but that's about where I'm at with it. And Heath, I, for obvious reasons, you'll be going last on this one. Yeah, I've I've never seen a full Star Trek movie until now, technically. And I've never watched a, an app, like I've never seen a full Trek, but... I did enjoy this. I enjoyed watching this movie, mostly because of Shatner, because he does mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff in it. He talks and like <laughs> has to do things. But uh, I loved it. I will need to ask a bunch of questions, probably directly to Callie throughout, in order to keep me on the same page with y'all. 
uh, about cl- maybe answer in English would be great. But, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be questions about stuff like that. Yeah. No promises. My best worst was almost <laughs> best best realization that Heath had no idea what the fuck was going on. <laughs> and in two days, I get to explain the movie Cats to Noah. That's how excited I am about today's episode. God. Yeah, so hey, if you're not a patron and you don't get the monthly secular bonus episodes, maybe consider signing up this month. We will be doing cats. Okay, <sighs> uh, before we even get into it, just first background question for Callie. What is a, a star trek? Like, do they, <laughs> do they measure fly them between tricks? stars? What, what's the background setting here? Yeah, that's, that's the general idea. World War III happened, and then the Vulcans came, and then everyone's friends. What well, is a Vulcan? <laughs> uh, you should know. You've seen this movie at least, right? Yeah, come on, Heath. Okay, Spock, I think, was a Vulcan, right? Yes. Also, okay, so uh, the villain, yeah. The, okay, so Vulcans are uh, strong disagree on that guy being the villain. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> how dare you? So Vulcan is the one well, you got the up up pointing eyebrows and ears and you're like uh, on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They are one of the races with the up pointing ears and the uh, eyebrows. Romulan's also. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Bigot. But yeah, they... <laughs> I like the Vulcans a lot. They're delightful. Spock, especially just his like, you know, antisocial over logical behavior is delightful. All right. Is there uh, anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, I started to hint at it. I'm going to go with best, worst, b- best, best William Shatner sweating. <laughs> and, and also this whole cast of fucking 80 year olds trying to be space cowboys for <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. it's so good like for everyone who watched this in the 60s and 70s this was like that sad yankees old timers game but not for baseball <laughs> for, for a, a franchise and you know you're like yeah reggie jackson's up cool mr octoy and he hurt himself he's oh man oh. he's vomiting he's vomiting a lot not even jogging around those bases huh not no. even <laughs> No, he's rolling. All right, they're helping him out. I'd say it's the best worst at convincing me to remain a Star Trek fan. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. There's a movie where Star Trek goes back in time to save the whales that looks damn coherent by comparison to this film. <laughs> hey, that was a good one, damn it. It was. I'm good. I was going to go with best worst space lightning. Okay. Like, <laughs> I was sitting here for so long trying to figure out the logistics of this goddamn great barrier and what it was and where it was. Um, yeah, all right, that that one pissed me off inordinately. It's like the ice around the earth. Noah, read a book. <laughs> Watch a documentary. And I was going to go with best, best God. Um uh-huh. Not going to spoil anything, but just best, best God. Yeah, no, and technically by the end of this, this totally counts as a GAM movie. Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, if there's one thing fans of the original Star Trek are used to, it's pauses. So I'm sure they're going to forgive this one. (laughs) But we'll be back soon with all the guy-on-guy porn setups that never materialize of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Um, Mr. Roddenberry? Ah, hey, hi, yes, Callie, come on in. Were, um, were you asleep? What? <laughs> no, I was in a deep Vulcan trance. Got it. I uh, just wanted to check in and see how the script for Star Trek V was coming along. Oh, shit. Uh, it's great. It's done, actually. Yeah, it is done. I just have to type it up. Oh, great. Well, uh, what's it about? It, ah, what's it about? Well, I'll tell you what it is about. It's about Spock's brother. Spock has a brother? Isn't he an outcast? Half-brother through marriage. Didn't let me finish. Okay, and what does he do? He has the power to fill you with regret. Spock's brother has the power to fill you with regret? Yes, he does. Like, if you let your dad die, or if you invented a groundbreaking television show, but then nobody ever let you write anything but that for 40 years, he shows you that. Um, Just as an example. as That's my example. I gotta tell you, Gene, this movie seems a little half-assed. 
four half-assed? What? Yeah, it's just Star Trek has always been so groundbreaking and controversial. This kind of seems like treading water. Not sure how people are going to like that. Okay. Uh, that's that's fair point. But you didn't let me finish because at the end of the movie, uh, they k- kill God. Who kills God? Everyone. All the Star Treks kill God. They kill God. Wow. Well, I take it back, Mr. Roddenberry. Still on the forefront, per usual. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, hey, Callie? Yeah, Gene? Did I ever tell you about the time that I was- You were in a plane crash? Yeah, Gene, you were in a plane crash. I almost died. Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, I'm just cutting in here with a quick heads up. We had a little bit of problem with Heath's audio for this next segment, so for a little while it's going to sound like maybe he's far away and standing at the bottom of a giant toilet. We apologize for that. It won't last the whole show, and we appreciate your patience. And now, back to the show. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on the desert planet Nimbus 3, where an old guy is... Digging holes to keep his steam in, I guess. <laughs> anyway, old guy is drilling in the dirt, and then like a burlap nun on a horse approaches him. Okay, and just want to throw this out here at the outset. A little ode to Eli's optimism before any of this movie happened. My first note was, hope y'all are ready for all of my notes to be yay, because I fucking love Star Trek. Mm. I will not have any more <laughs> yay notes. <laughs> I actually have a bunch of yes, and I didn't love Star Trek. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, right, right. No, if it's not raping something you love, this movie's much better. <laughs> so this guy's coming up on a horse, and the old dude, hole digger guy, grabs his rock gun thing. Yeah, I'm, I feel like the special effects budget is very well summarized by the 23rd century potato gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all the weapons in the whole movie are like, yeah. they look like homemade uh, paintball guns at yep. best. <laughs> yep, yep. Like the, the guy who like put it together, he knew about the like pressure of the tube of PVC. It's I don't want to hear your explanation of your homemade gun, no. <laughs> and... Desert guy, the one who grabs the gun, at first, his teeth are, like, all rotten, but I thought he was wearing braces. So I wrote in my notes, is that guy wearing braces? Because he <laughs> tend not, asso- not to associate braces and, like, not having enough water. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> no. So, equestrian guy, I, I have him as Burlap Jesus for, for a little while until they give him his name. So, Burlap Jesus comes up, and he starts talking to this dude about, uh, like, overcoming his pain or whatever the guy goes like what do you know of my pain and he's like well you know i see that you're just digging holes in the middle of a desert so i've got an idea you know to to start (laughs) with here so i have uh i have our friend as low rent sean connery okay Um, which by the way they did want sean connery for that part that that, that's who they wrote it works on both levels sure they wanted a lot of things (laughs) yeah (laughs) That means somewhere there is test screen footage of him going, Spock, what do you mean it's just an ish? Spock, I said it. Yeah, and I kind of felt like they were negotiating a BDSM scene. Yes. Yes. And yes. they were. We're about to find yeah, out. Yeah, right, actually, they were. So, yeah, so, like, I don't know, he he, he releases his pain, or there's some, supposed to be some mystical shit going on. The key is, though, that... Burlap Jesus wants Gollum's grandpa to join his holy quest, right? <laughs> I just, yeah, I wrote down Gatheist Manifesto, episode negative 432. <laughs> but, but yeah, Burlap Jesus guy, just he's like talking about wooey religious culty stuff already. And he's talking about the ultimate knowledge. And then the like desert hole digger guys like, oh, you're looking for the ultimate knowledge. Let's just start simple. Do you have any floss? <laughs> I, there are so many floss. things I need before ultimate knowledge, dude. That's just going to throw that yeah, out there. One at a time. I just, because he's like, wants him to join some kind of holy cause. I wanted this guy to like react like people actually react to missionaries. Hello, friend. Oh, hey. I have come with good news about Shakari. Oh, uh, no, no, thank you. You no, see, you. each I'm man good. has a secret. So, no, so, so sorry about this. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. 
not interested. But thank you. I guess you know, enjoy okay. doing that um, somewhere else. Could I maybe leave some literature about Shakari for you and to read later when you have time? Uh, um, yeah, sure. You, yeah, you can leave you something. Um, are, all right. Are you going to throw all of this out? I am super duper going to throw it out. Yes, right there. First garbage I see. Okay. But unfortunately, that is not how it works out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, our, our Gollum friend gets really excited and sticks his fingers up his nose, which is <laughs> it's what you do. Yeah, Did he? I, I missed that. That's weird. Yeah, that I'm not entirely like it. He covers his he covers his face with his hand in like shock and amazement. And his two fingers literally get right up to his nostrils because <laughs> I, I pick my nose when I'm that excited. I don't know about you guys. It was below the rim. It doesn't count. <laughs> so. And then, okay, and then I know what we're getting into. I've seen most of this movie before. I walked out before it was over, but I've seen most of this movie before. But still, it doesn't fucking matter because when the title comes up and the music starts getting playing, I get excited as fuck, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I've, again, never watched a full episode or a full movie, but I knew this music very well, and I got pumped. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, and yeah, then I, I don't have a joke. It showed uh, Nichelle Nichols as part of the cast, and I was like, "Yes, I know who she is too." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't have a joke. I'm just a nerd, and Star Trek <laughs> yeah. music always makes me want to cry. Yep. I liked this part. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we open in uh, Yosemite, and check out this clever wordplay. Will you? We open on William Shatner climbing. El Capitan, get it? Because he's the get El Ca yeah. yeah. Hey, got to give it to Star Trek's optimism, thinking there's going to be national parks in six thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not six thousand; it's only a couple. It's years. yeah, like three hundred. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, oh, it's star date eight thousand four hundred fifty four point one. That's that's like three hundred years into it's our like future. Twenty three hundred something. Yeah, I, I believe that's when this is. But this movie's supposed to be set. Yeah. What is it, what is the zero of star dates? Is there like a reason for that? That's literally never been explained in canon. That's so <laughs> stupid. What? <laughs> yeah, that's great because you know someone has been like, all right, we should explain what star dates are, and someone else, a series of someone else's, have been like, no, fuck you, Steve. They, we, there are seven thousand episodes of this thing, and there's gonna be a mis a mistake in and one that, of them. Exactly. This that's movie the has a space Jesus. They could have used this. They could have explained <laughs> it right here. Yeah. But that's the thing. There's no way to explain it that's going to make sense going back through everything they've ever done with it. There's so much in, in Star Trek that they're like, no, we can't because there's we can't explain that now. Do you want to go back and watch the original series? No, I don't want to go back and watch the original <laughs> series. <laughs> then we're not explaining what Stardate means. <laughs> All right. So and then we watch Shatner climb El Capitan. By the way, we get more we're of so this wrong. goddamn climb than we did in free fucking solo. A movie so about hard. climbing El Capitan. Jesus. Uh, and by the way, this is so amazing. Thank you to whoever pointed this out on I, the IMDb trivia. You can see El Capitan in the background when you, they do the close-ups of William Shatner climbing the <laughs> bullshit fiberglass thing that he's on. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like the most distinctive peak in the fucking world. The only thing that they couldn't show that yes. would mess up the thing they're yes. climbing they showed. <laughs> Still, to be fair, this is a worthy goal. I mean, William Shatner's going to be the first to climb El Capitan in hammer pants. <laughs> It's pretty impressive. <laughs> I just kept thinking about how much I wanted those shoes because oh, like, I want those shoes. They look great. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of like Robin Hoody, kind of, but also kind of like future b boy thing. I don't know. I, whatever they are, I agree. Like wrestling <laughs> shoes, a little bit too. Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. I don't know. But I wanted Spock's shoes. I mean, if we're gonna be talking about wanting oh, shoes, boots. yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So as he's climbing, uh, Spock shows up with some flying rocket boots to be like, this is fucking stupid. You can just fly. <laughs> he's the best. <laughs> yeah, Captain Kirk, for the record, is getting a two-way heckle. He's getting a close-up heckle from Spock and then a, a heckle from the ground by Bones. Yeah, Bones right. Is just on the ground being like, no, as a doctor, this is stupid. I want to back up the ball <laughs> <laughs> And Bones is wearing the most fabulous fucking neckerchief. I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> it's a oh fucking ascot. Asshole. It is, an <laughs> yeah, ascot. it is an ascot. Thank you. And you it's know, that's, this is why I just use the term cravat. It's all encompassing. It's so much easier. <laughs> the ascot's a bold choice for 
hiking around Yosemite. I got to say, like, I like, I like Bones, Bones being, you know, being outrageous with his uh, fashion. Yeah, like, no, I like it. normally that requires no neckwear at all. He pulls it off. <laughs> yes, yeah. he does. That's his hiking ascot, damn it. It's his hiking <laughs> ascot. Well, and then there's this, okay, so Spock distracts Kirk so much that he falls, right? He falls off the mountain face. And then we suddenly have to remember all at once what special effects were like in 1989. Oh, Oh, you could just see the wires and the fat guy pulling them on the other side of the set. It was a better time, a magical time. (laughs) So, but luckily for him, Spock catches him. Uh, right before and, and like inches before he hits the ground in the most comical of ways. And by the way, j- the, the shtick is so thick that when he catches him, Kirk looks up at Bones and goes, you mind if we drop in for dinner? Like, that's the level of humor we're going to get in this fucking movie. OK, yeah. <laughs> I also love how the rockets don't have to be firing downwards suddenly. Like, yeah. just be, like, sideways. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Um, yes. I, I want to yes. see him doing like an eight point turn before he has to go. Just like, ah, okay, side. Which, did I turn it back? Fuck. God. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, meanwhile, on Desert Shit Planet, we check in on a Mos Eisley ripoff called Paradise City, where we, we pan into this alien strip club where there's a three boobed cat stripper and wet billiards i don't but they, they're so not fucking trying here this is, a, this is a great set yeah this scene has me even more convinced that they actually really wanted to make a star trek porno yeah because like oh. trailer park most eisley has all of my kinks there's cat women there's someone wearing chains there's a bald guy with horns yeah like it's checks everything. all the boxes well i mean 80s bars on other planets apparently looked Pretty much like 80s bars on Earth. Like, it's yeah, very similar. It turns some things out. are universal. Yeah. But I love that, like, the writing process at, at some point was like, all right, what? It's got to be different, right? We're in space. What's going to be different here? And somebody was like, uh, the pool table w- would have water, like, you know, like a pool. Like, it's pool, <laughs> pool table. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's all we need. But I, I totally got this planet all of a sudden. This planet is Federation Star Trek's Vegas, right? Like, mm-hmm. the scenery sucks, sure, but you get a three-boobed furry stripper. It's, you're not there for the scenery. <laughs> 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 All right, so what we're seeing here, like, like, there's this Romulan that's coming through. So apparently, this is a planet that was supposed to be, like, where all of the races were going to live in peace. There's a Romulan representative, a Klingon representative, and a human representative, and they're all meeting together in the back room to have some cigars or something, right? Callie, maybe you can relate to this, but as someone who truly, truly loved the sort of like Planet of Peace series as it appeared in the Star Trek show, this is kind of like fine. The fact that this uses the Planet of Peace in this movie is kind of like if all of Lord of the Rings had been leading up to a TGI Fridays where all the dwarves and elves (laughs) were together. There was like 20 really good episodes about the show about creating this. And then this movie is just like, I don't know, Space Vegas. People dig holes. Are you happy? (laughs) Ultimate drinks. Whatever. There's a lot of good stuff going on in TGI Fridays. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. (laughs) All right. So but just as they're meeting in their smoke filled back room, Burlap Jesus comes at the head of an army to take over the city. But but here's the thing. The city's not locked up. No. Right? Like they they could all just walked in, but instead they like run in like they're raiding it and everybody like that would be like us raiding a Walmart, right? Like it's open. <laughs> it's just open. Right. Yep. <laughs> in fact, they have to close the gate so that they can knock it down. There's yeah. <laughs> where they're like, yes. yes. Close the gate. People are coming into our open planet of peace man in context this scene really doesn't hold up (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i love that in this in this scene star trek is doing that not so vaguely racist thing it does a lot where it has like these people are different so they're going to chant this random weird obviously not english shit to let you know that these are the bad guys yes (laughs) Uh (laughs) uh-huh yeah and what's perfect is this movie is just on the cusp of get it Klingons and no we meant Klingons were cool the whole time which is like a transition that Star Trek made 
relatively smoothly, but this is this beautiful middle area where they're like, look at the Klingons and the shouty, shouty brown people. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> the Klingon portrayal is crazy. You're saying they've fixed it? It's This is better than it used to be? <laughs> this is them fixing it. It's episodes 99 through 104 of GAM. No, they're like, yeah. it is <laughs> super racist. I'm not sure against whom, what group, but it's definitely somebody, this is anti, so, so, they look ridiculous. <laughs> It, it looks like they all just had a cigar explode in their face. Just <laughs> hey, that you're the one who's right. That's just what Klingons look like. Okay, so just that's your racism. Well, that just saying something that's true. That <laughs> so Vulcan Jesus kidnaps the Romulan and the Vulcan and the human, the representatives of the various governments. All right, that's the fucking oh, inciting incident in this film. And then we introduce the new Enterprise because I'm assuming in the last movie they blew the Enterprise up again because that's the only thing they can think of to do in these fucking movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I don't rem remember uh, well enough to know what happened. It's a very emotional before. time for some of us, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> some of us have been sad every time the ship blows up. Let me show okay, you my except page. one. <laughs> also, one other thing on the like racism. So the Scottish guy is named Scotty, and like. The Czechoslovakian guy is right before the breakup. His name is Chekhov, right? Like, it's so lazy. Just, and the Asian guy, they were like, Asian noise, Sulu. That's Asian, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like Uhura was called Darky on a bunch of drafts, and they were like, all right, <laughs> we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the first note that I have for this scene is, get it? People with Scottish accents use funny words to describe things. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> right? Look. I'm standing my ground right here. This is where my progressivism ends. You cannot take Scotty away from me. <laughs> <laughs> he makes funny noises. He runs into things. It's all I want left. You've taken everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so it's linguistic slavery, the uh, Scottish <laughs> stereotype stuff. You got to be allowed. You got to allow it. I will go full Jordan Peterson about Scotty. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so Scotty's pissed off. We we zoom in on him in the fucking Enterprise. This is the new Enterprise, and they haven't gotten everything quite right. Everything on the ship doesn't work. This will be, I don't like it's. It, they set it up like it's going to be a source of comedy later. Really, is just there because having a transporter fucks up almost every possible idea for a plot, and they have to get rid of it. Right, well, and also <laughs> Scotty has to be in the movie. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. He has no other function in the film. That's, that's a good point. But what's amazing about this is they commit the cardinal sin of Star Trek, which is never try to explain the Star Trek. So Scotty's just <laughs> wandering around with a vaguely wrench-shaped object, just <laughs> a Varda cadavering various like he, there's n it's not even a wrench. He's not even wrenching. Yeah, something. he's doing like the cooking mime hip hop dance yeah, yeah, all this that's stuff. Right. nothing just waving stuff near other stuff that's fixing stuff yeah panels are changing from red to green and he's like sure why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah right <laughs> these lights don't blink in sequence hey you doing the spray right now i feel like that's completely <laughs> yeah. he's off, off the rails scotty he's just sweet to we cut over to scotty and he's spinning two wrenches like poi <laughs> 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 this is for the air conditioning <laughs> Somebody give Scotty Molly. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, Someone stop that. giving Scotty Molly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of which, Ahura shows up and we get to watch them have lunch together. I guess they're setting up a love interest thing or maybe that was already set up. I don't know. I thought she was fucking Kirk last I heard. I is how little I know. But Ahura wants to make it super clear that she would absolutely fuck Scotty right there on that instrument panel, even with all the techies watching. They're just red shirts. They ain't going to last long anyway, but they don't. Again, this movie is full of my kinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you into the camping kink thing that we're about to get to? I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I agree on that. 100%. All right, and I love this moment, too, because, like, there a red alert comes through. You know, it's like, red and alert. And then we find out dubstep made it to the 23rd yeah. century. Red, red alert. <laughs> but Scotty could give zero fucks about this, right? He's like, you know what? I will get to that red alert when I am done with this bag of fucking chips. <laughs> I got excited about the chips. I got to be honest. Yeah. So <laughs> I, the chips, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, nice. She probably 
So, yeah. So, but then now they have to recall everyone from shore leave. So we check in on Sulu and Chekhov in a very like, look, they're in this movie too, kind of a scene. Okay. They were absolutely finding a place to bone and then got communicated and they were like, oh, yep. We were, we were just hiking. hanging out. <laughs> normal hiking. Why'd you say normal hiking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like they were very much trying to play up the like, men can't ask for directions. That happens in the 23rd century too. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So meanwhile, we cut back to Bones and Spock and Kirk. They're still out camping and... And Bones is lecturing Kirk like the girlfriend in Free Solo, basically like, hey, man, don't do <laughs> and, and they end up with, with this. I don't, I don't even know what the fuck they were going for. Where They have this conversation about how Kirk knows that he will die alone. <laughs> I've always known <laughs> I'll die alone. The Heath and Wright story. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Spock was like. All right, man, I'm like a super genius, logical robot person, and that's super dumb. That you, <laughs> know what you, mean? you didn't die because I rocket boot saved you. Let's be super <laughs> clear about that. <laughs> yeah, Emo Kirk is definitely my least favorite Kirk. I'm not a super huge fan of Emo <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> yeah. and, and neither is Bones, because Bones is like, cool, cool, you'll... You'll die alone. Kind of ruined my beans. And I feel like maybe McCoy is doing that thing where he picks on the person he has a crush on. Like, I feel oh. like he's just got it in for Spock. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like projecting. Okay. So, yeah, on the beans thing, they're all eating beans together. And apparently Bones brought camping with him a giant wrought iron tripod and like a witch's cauldron enormous <laughs> is that camping equipment I, I guess the, I guess this is like federation level LARPing yeah. <laughs> no look you just you, you hike in a replicator and you're good yeah <laughs> it's the future come on that's just how shit's done okay yeah. here's a transporter can you beam a cauldron Oh, there you well, go. As we, as has been explained several times, the transporter is not working. So, <laughs> well, there are other transporters here on Earth, though. So, yeah, yeah that could have been it. They just okay. transported out there. Uh, just a follow up question on transporters: Can they they can beam objects and people and kind of whatever you want? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like you have a transporter up on your ship, and you can just be like, "I want that rock from down on Earth," and if you can like see it, you can get it. Yeah, unless there's some uh, plot required electromagnetic interference. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. electromagnetic okay. interference. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> what if what if two different like rival ships both have a transporter? Could they just like fight over stuff back and forth, grabbing it? <laughs> yes. And do they do that's that? That's a thing that's happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a thing. That's Can happened. you steal yep. somebody else's transporter with your transporter? <laughs> Heath is trying to figure out how to cheat at the transporter wars he'll never participate I'm in. <laughs> Very healthy. <laughs> what what what's happening now is Heath is catching up on like thirty five years of nerd conversations in one episode. Right? Yeah, you have no it's idea adorable. how many forums are out there just for you, yes, Heath. And exactly. Right. <laughs> I was just thinking, there's whole wings of the internet devoted to this quest. This conversation. Heath and I live in the same city. We can do slumber parties, my friend. We can make this happen. <laughs> Fantastic. Wh whiskey, beans, and transporter arguments. Yeah, Let's right. There you <laughs> so into this, and I'll teach yeah. you how to say dirty things in Klingon. Oh, okay, let's lock in. Mm -hmm. And if you're good, we'll show you the weird episode of Enterprise where they all discuss whether or not transporters technically kill you. It's a whole thing. We don't need to get into it here on the show. Wait, they what? Well, you disintegrate someone. Oh, you mean like the, like the ship of Theseus? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, interesting. They kind of do. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. There is definitely a whole wing of the internet devoted to this argument. So, yeah. All right. Now we're going to get to this amazing part where they sing, row, row, row your boat. This is... <laughs> This is the plot of the goddamn movie, isn't it? It's a big deal. <laughs> the strongest and longest lasting through line of this film is the song, the song Row, 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 That's correct. <laughs> this, yeah. this movie might as well be like, Based on the song Row, Row, Row Your Boat and characters created by Gene Roddenberry. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, they're out camping and they decide, like, oh, we're supposed to, what do you do? You eat marshmallows and you have sing alongs, right? And they decide. Hang on. Spock is hilariously not human, so they're marshmallows. 
Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And they let him go on it because they're like, oh, he's going to keep saying this for the rest of his life and people will laugh at him. Yeah, they literally yeah. say that word again several they, times. They let him go on marshmallows, which I enjoyed. Yeah. And then they decide, yeah, all right, we got to do a sing along. And they land on <laughs> your boat and they decide, you know, you got to sing it as a round, right? And then. They start singing around and they immediately cannot keep the round going, which is my favorite <laughs> part of this movie. Like <laughs> watching people try to be like, row, 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 gently. I just went back into yours. Fuck. All right. I, just, I can't keep my thing going. You got, we look a different direction. Look a different direction. We try to do it. It's so good. <laughs> so this is probably an inside baseball Star Trek thing, but actually my favorite part of this scene is when they're like talking, trying to figure out the song they're going to sing. And they do this Star Trek thing where they go through a list of three things. Yes. Two yes. things are things we know. And, and one thing is a reference to something only in Star Trek. <laughs> yes. I have that in my notes like five times with because they do that over and over and over again in this movie right. and in every other Star Wars movie or show. It's so fucking good. Yeah. Star Trek, Freudian slip. Yep. So, <laughs> all right. So they sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat. And and apparently, like, Spock wrestles with those lyrics for the rest of his life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Spock got high as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys ever think about it, life is not a dream. It's like yeah. a real, real thing. He opens that next scene with... Okay, that song's got Spock all fucked up. <laughs> Are you guys mad at me? I'm not an asshole. You're assholes. <laughs> all right. So elsewhere in the galaxy, by the way, uh, the Klingons are hanging out, destroying <laughs> shit, wishing they could kill people. Klingons are blowing shit up because they're the meth heads of the Star Trek universe. I guess. Yes. Bo with that Vimushchai. <laughs> with their fucking Atari based targeting system. <laughs> All right. But yeah, but main Klingon is like, he's like, man, I'm sick and tired of shooting at boring old satellites. I want to kill something that's alive, damn it. And just then they get this distress call from Paradise City. Now, this might seem like a weird thing to say. And Callie, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on this one. Oh, I will. <laughs> but the chick playing the fucking Klingon is fucking this accent up, isn't she? Oh, completely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. It sounded like me, like, like, you know, it sounded like me doing Italian or something like that. It was so awkward and stilted and uncomfortable. Yeah. The, the guy who created Klingon was a consultant on this movie. So like he had a hand in it, but I feel like they just like bought him dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is it a full like speakable language? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Absolutely. there's like a, about a, I think about a thousand word vocabulary. So like you can have real conversations. Yeah, nice. there's got conjugations and all. My, my dad speaks for a pretty good Klingon. Yeah, one of the notes that I had for this scene, speaking of Klingons being racist, I feel it very important to point out that the Klingon portrayal is racist against real people, uh, for sure. But it is a less racist Klingon portrayal. <laughs> because <laughs> as bad as, uh, as bad as the Klingon is in this movie, it's worse in the TV series. And so, like, I can't help but love it. You know, could be worse. <laughs> right, yeah. right, yeah. Exactly. What race are they portraying worse in the TV series? <laughs> uh, anyone who is sufficiently different enough from white American people. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, just everything. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, no, savages is what it is, right? <laughs> right. It's, Again, Heath, yeah. there's forum upon forum out there just waiting for you, buddy. I got to tell you. <laughs> okay, so Shatner is taking up the white man's burden in outer space. Like, most of that period is what you're saying. Well, that's the first series. Again, Heath, you got to get caught up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. And then the second series is, hey, we never asked for your help. And then the third series <laughs> is, never mind, we would actually like your help. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, half an hour into the goddamn movie, everybody <laughs> can show up at the Enterprise and the plot can fucking start. And the only thing I absolutely need to point out is that Captain Kirk will be wearing the mommest of mom jeans. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, they are they're wrapped snugly around his neck. <laughs> Decavericis, it's pretty great. <laughs> and Scotty is Scottishly upset again. Yep. yep. Yes, that he is. <laughs> and I love cause th th this is so half assed. They're like uh you know, they get back to the ship and he's like, hey, Starfleet, why the fuck would you send us on this thing? Seeing as how our ship is falling apart and we were on shore leave. And they're like, because, Kirk, only you can handle this job. And it's like, but the job is just 
Like, it's not like a job that requires any special skill or talent. It's just go to this fucking planet and ask for your guy back. Right. They make so little effort to explain why the fuck any of them would be involved with this. But anyway, it, they need to go to Nimbus three and rescue the hostages. Right. Yep. What is Kirk's job? He's just like captain of like space cops. He's captain of the Starship Enterprise. That's it's like, right. Hey. And they're they're like a Federation legal enforcement team. Not they're like the Space Navy. Yeah. 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 Kind of. Well, kind of, but it's but they're it, it more exploration than war. So right, right, yeah. yeah. So so sort of like the British Navy in the eighteen. Yeah, no, it's colonization. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say <laughs> yes. 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 space <laughs> navy, but there's they're supposed to go down because there's so much better than the other planets. That's not better. That doesn't yep. make yeah. it sound better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't get it. You have to watch the series. You watch it. You watch the series. No criticism till you watch it. <laughs> so. <laughs> so do Klingon lives matter? I feel like it's a no. <laughs> Depends on the movie. Sometimes they do. <laughs> All lives <Great>. matter, Heath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, I, like I feel like in this movie more than ever, I finally understood why there is so much fan fiction about Spock and Kirk fucking. Right? Oh. There are so many set like like uh, when when they're in the elevator there, and and Kirk's like, I could really use a shower. Spock. Yeah. Shower. Spock's just yeah. like, yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Shoot the fuck you down. could use the shower. You, William Shatner. <laughs> I, Leonard Nemo, I believe you, William Shatner, before we act more in an elevator together. You need a shower. Are you, are you fishing for smell compliments? No. Not happening. Stop saying cut, Gene. I don't care. Keep it in the movie. <laughs> also, we just fucked a bunch. You smell like cum. Yes. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, the Klingons learn that the Enterprise is the one that's going to be coming to Nimbus three and they are fucking stoked. I just I love how much trouble encryption or speaking in code would have saved them in this movie. But OK. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the captain's log isn't working. Well, that's pretty wacky. <laughs> oh they've got this amazing moment where it like pops out and the extra looks at him like huh yeah. that's the comic bit I, want, I really wanted that cartoon spring noise yeah right <laughs> oh by the way that extra William Shatner's daughter oh I thought it was his oh. wife I believe it's his daughter, daughter. <laughs> got it Nice. I did enjoy watching Shatner try to work this like touch screen. It's like watching my dad try to work a touch screen. It was, it was yeah. rough. <laughs> yeah. They're about to call like Haji, the IT guy in or some whatever <laughs> racist <laughs> name they had for him. Right. So, and, and also, by the way, there's this moment that makes no sense and it never comes back where like Kirk talks about the kidnapped Klingon hostage. He clearly wants to fuck him, right? He's clearly saying, like, I don't know about you guys, but if you give me 15 minutes and a little whiskey, I think me and this... Like, there's no reason for him to know this Klingon or anything like that, right? Yeah, well, that's another a thing they always do in Star Trek. Like, this person's ex was required reading when I was at the Academy, and that's, like, how you communicate that this thing is supposed to be important, even though you've never heard of it before. And, and it gosh, has oh, gosh. zero impact on anything else in Star Trek okay. ever. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I forget who it was. Again, Heath, as you're going through the forums, someone has event has on the internet put together all the things that they say are required reading at the academy, <laughs> and it is a series of nonsense statements. Okay. <laughs> awesome. and this is one of them. Also, want to throw this out there. Cord, only full-bodied Klingon in Star Trek history up to this point. Work it, Cord. Fucking work it. <laughs> <laughs> And this is where we get to see the hostage video that uh, Vulcan Jesus sent out. Yeah. Okay, weird space work choices in this hostage video. She <laughs> she walks down a set of stairs and then back up again. Yeah, why? <laughs> it's a Sorkin walk and talk in a hostage video. <laughs> And, and clearly just a whole bunch of cuts in this hostage. Like, director was like, all right, cut. Everybody hit your mark. Look for the X on the ground. This is a serious hostage <laughs> video. Take it serious. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking it looked like a, a YouTube video. It's like somebody who had lots of mom and dad's money but has never used a camera before. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. 
All right, well, I'll tell you what. This is pretty much the last time it seems like this could get interesting in the film, so it's a perfect spot for us to pause for a break, but we'll be back because where the fuck else would we go? Okay, I hear that, but what if I write it for free? Because it's not Star Trek. That's why I'll write it for free. Hi, Gene. I'm going to call you back. What was that? Nothing. Just ah, just talking to my agent. What's up, Callie? What's going on? So I got that script you sent over for Star Trek V. Yeah, did that. What do you What do you think? Um, it's fine. I think there's a little issue though. What's that? You wrote it episode length. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not an episode. It's a movie. Right. Fuck. Uh, of course. I mean, it's it's a great episode. Yeah, good episode of the show Star Trek, but not a movie. Star Trek movie, right. Uh, how much time do we need for a movie? I mean, another hour? An hour? Fuck. How long are movies? Longer than an hour. <laughs> uh, no, nope, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, let's put in some Spock and Kirk and Bones go camping. They go camping. Yep. Whole kit and caboodle. Kirk wants to, I don't know, climb some shit. And then they they have dinner. How long would it be if he climbs shit and they have dinner? I mean, maybe 30 minutes. Okay. They have dinner and they sing around. Um. Plus, plus the ship is broken. So we'll watch Scotty fix the ship for a while. Like in a super intense plot driven way? Or? No, no, he's ju it's just like general maintenance stuff. It's just, he's just like fixing random stuff. How long is that? Like 40 minutes? Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, also, uh, Ohura is going to bring Scotty lunch and we're going to watch them have lunch. Is that good on time? Yeah, I think that'll do it. Hey, Callie. Yeah, Gene. You'd watch it if I wrote a movie about like time travelers, right? Like, if in order to save the world, these guys had to go back in time. Is it Star Trek? Yeah. Then, yeah, I'd watch the shit out of that. Cool. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. When we last left off, they were watching the hostage video. Now, we did not mention that Spock seemed maybe to recognize that Vulcan dude from the hostage video. So we're going to rejoin him in this I don't know, his dimly lit pirate-themed brooding room? <laughs> it's a cool room to have. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's just to signal how serious this is about to get. Uh, yeah, right, right. What's serious? Pirates? Yep, yep. yep. Pirates. <laughs> so Kirk and McCoy show up to say, hey, man, you know, what? what's going on with this scene? <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> you, you're sitting in the dark? <laughs> you're sitting in the dark. You're sitting in the dark. <laughs> and McCoy never misses a chance, as always, to just be like, I don't like most things or most people. <laughs> so now, OK, so Spock, though, thinks he knows who that kidnapper Vulcan is. He's an exiled Vulcan who wasn't logical enough to be a real Vulcan. Right. He's Vulcan Satan. <laughs> yeah, now that's all they fucking yeah. tell him. So they went all the way into the fucking pirate theme lounge for Spock to tell him that he thinks it might have been a guy. Like, I feel like you could have just told him that on the bridge, right? <laughs> I feel like you just could have told us that Spock is what this movie's subtitle should have been. <laughs> <laughs> God, Jesus, there's so fucking much of that in this movie. All right, so now they've got to go down to the planet. But of course, the transporter still isn't working. Otherwise, this movie would already be over. So they have to go down the old fashioned way. Yes. I, I wrote the old fashioned way. We're going to have to walk through space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they have a little shuttle. So they, you know, head down to the planet and, you know, hover around for a bit. Also, we should point out that that those Klingons know where they are. So they're coming for them. The, the Klingon bird of prey is coming to like, you know, they're like, oh, we should be there right around at middle of act three, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Kirk is heading down to the planet with Spock and Bones. Chekhov is going to stay back on the Enterprise and pretend that he's the captain while he, they negotiate with fucking Vulcan Jesus here. 
Yeah, my favorite thing about this scene is Chekhov doing bad acting while Walter Koenig is also doing bad acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just be yourself, man. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so then we get the most amazing goddamn scene in the movie by fucking far. Uh, oh, her <laughs> distraction? Yes. So they've got... Oh, it's beautiful. They need Again, some a movie fo- full of my kinks. Uh, right, right, yes. <laughs> One more thing on our beans and arguing and whiskey night. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Um, what we're talking about, by the way, is a siren feather dance that Uhura's doing here. To so into it. Confuse... <laughs> You're, you're into, okay, me too. Yep. So she's dancing up on top of like a sand dooney ridge thing to distract the mob of culty people who have taken over this uh, strip club. Yeah. So basically, for clarity, what's happening is they're trying to sneak into the strip club and there's a bunch of like the mob cult people waiting down below. And what they did is they turned to Ohura and they were like, wait, 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 we need a distraction. Did you bring a bunch of sexy feathers you can do a dance with? And she was like, I did bring a bunch of sexy feathers. I always I bring that. Dance and I with. brought them down to this planet with me. You guys yes. know I always bring that. Standard issue is Starfleet survival gear. It's, it's a thing you'll learn as you get more into Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> Mandatory reading at the academy. <laughs> siren feather dance from that book. So that required reading that. Less. You should see Kirk's. <laughs> All right, but no, hey, you know what? The fucking plan works. So who are we to second guess it? Exactly. Right. Now they were doing all of that so that they could get horses to ride into Paradise City on. So we go from there to this, like they ride into the city and then there's this big ass silly fucking sequence from before we learned how to do action scenes. Oh, right. it's amazing. My only note on this scene is, Kirk, you have to stop taking hug breaks in the middle of our big group fights. <laughs> <laughs> I was really mad when Spock Vulcan nerve pinched a horse. Yeah! <laughs> um, okay, what? <laughs> yeah. um, my only note here is, did Spock just kill a horse with a gentle caress <laughs> on the nape of its neck? He know, it's sure What did you say it was? Did. It's, a, it's, a, it's a Vulcan nerve pinch. Okay, if that's a power that only Vulcans have, they can gently caress you to death. Yep. Well, not yes. to death. It's, it's yeah, a little more nerves. complicated than that, it's but that's what we'll go with for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't get it. You're not a Vulcan, Heath. They're super logical, plus they're nerve manipulating ninjas that can kill you. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, kill yeah. you. It, it just puts you. Yeah, just oh, it's not a kill. No, it's not a kill. And Heath. Teaser, when you and Callie do your best friend forum searching night, the reason for the Vulcan neck pinch is one of the best in all of cinema and TV history. So I'll leave it to your Google. <laughs> all right. And no horses were harmed by a Vulcan neck pinch in the making of this movie. Correctly. Exactly. I also, I love this moment too. Like um, Burlap Jesus, the, the bad guy Vulcan that's kidnapped everybody. He's talking to Chekhov when the attack comes and he looks to Chekhov. He's like, what the hell's going on? He's like, you're under attack. You need to surrender. He says, I didn't, I never wanted bloodshed. Damn it. Okay, guys, bring out the rail guns. We have several. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Hold on. Mixed signals here. Okay. So finally, though, Kirk manages to get into the strip club. And earlier, there was a three boobed <laughs> cat stripper in the movie. This is, this is the best you- thing. If there is a fucking three tittied cat stripper in a fucking Star Trek movie, you can bet your ass that Kirk is either going to fight or fuck or fight, then fuck it. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, it is not mutually exclusive. No, not at all. <laughs> By the way, oh. if you enjoyed this scene, you will love the entire first series of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that just hours of William Shatner getting, like, face attacked by lion snake strippers with <laughs> yes. sometimes extra boobs? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Big fan. That's pretty much right. the whole fucking thing, yeah. I gotta, get, I gotta get into this. I don't know how I haven't heard about <laughs> yeah, this man. before. And then you go to a convention where pretty girls dress like that lion boob stripper. <laughs> it's the best! <laughs> So I will say, though, pretty clever the way that he takes out the cat stripper, throws her into the water billiards. Cats hate water. It makes perfect fucking sense. Oh. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I love how they, for comedic value somehow, while they're in the middle of the struggle that is obviously not a struggle, the TV turns on and there's like the enthusiastic sales guy trying to sell you real estate on Nimbus 3 in the mm-hmm. background. Like that <laughs> <Yeah>. was fun. <laughs> 
It would have been great if he threw her into the pool and she just started like jumping straight up in the air like cats do that thing they when they like don't know when they're freaked out. (laughs) She's just like he puts a cucumber behind her. (laughs) (laughs) That thing, yes. (laughs) All right, so now they they go to rescue the hostages, but it turns out that the hostages are now on fucking Vulcan Jesus's side. So they kidnap Kirk and Spock. Yeah, and I love how in the establishing shot of this, you can see the camera pan through these three people. And like you hear the Romulan say words, you hear the humans say words, and the Klingon just goes, mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is racist. <laughs> um, Kelly, quick question on the uniforms yeah. that are chosen by the Starfleet command people, I guess, or the people on the Enterprise. Yeah. Uh, at some point, somebody was like, all right, well, we've got these great cable knit sweaters with turtlenecks. Um, we are going to need to, like, bolster the shoulder area. So they've got um, a little bit of extra different fabric there. Does that come into play? Is there a lot of shoulder attacking or what function is that serving? That's a good question. Um, the uh, The real world explanation was that William Shatner desperately wanted to redesign the Starfleet uniforms for this movie, but they didn't have the budget. So mm-hmm. their compromise was the away team uniforms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everyone's a red shirt in Star Trek V. <laughs> so- <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... And this is, of course, where Spock and Cybok meet face to face, right? And 45 minutes into the movie. We yeah. Oh, name. yeah. <laughs> really wanted Cybok and Spock's meeting to be like running into friends when I'm back home. Spock? Spock, is that you? Oh, uh, hey. Um, Cybok. Cybok. I knew that. I knew well, that. How are you, man? It's been for Give me a hug, buddy. Oh, okay. You're hugging. You're wow. Hugging. What? What are you up to these days? Oh, I'm uh, in the Federation. Actually. Cool. Cool. So cool. Hey, do do you know Steve Wilkers? No. Oh, okay. He's he's in the Federation. That's that's why I asked. Oh, um, it's a it's a big Federation. It's sure. Yeah. No, planets. I know. I know. But you, should, you never know unless you ask. That's that's true. You do never know. Well, it's been awesome seeing you. Yeah, uh, you too, man. Let's. You know, we we should get some coffee or something. You know, I, how long are you in town? Oh, just for the holidays. Not not long. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, well, hit me up. You have my communicator, right? Yep. Totally. Yes, I will hit you up. All right. Awesome seeing you, Spock. Awesome seeing you. Cybot. Uh, Cybok. Yep. That's what I said. Cybok. Cybok. Yep. Yes. It would have been better than what we got. It would, that would have been. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this, yeah, this is Space Jesus. Vulcan Jesus is, his name is Cybok. And we're going to learn more about him a few scenes from now. But right now, all we know is that he wants to steal their spaceship. And there's, this excellent moment where Kirk, where William Shatner is obviously very mad because he hasn't had a line for four lines. And he's like, excuse me, that's my ship. And, and Cybok goes, who are you? And he's practically like, I'm William Shatner. I'm the main character. I mean, I'm <laughs> Captain James T. Kirk. <laughs> so, you need to Google me, motherfucker. <laughs> Stop asking me for autographs. Oh, you all did. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, now wait. I have a I have a Klingon linguistic question here for you, Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. Because at this point, we cut back to the Klingons, uh, and they're getting really close, and they're speaking Klingon, and we're getting the translation. But at the bottom of the translation, they say, you know, we're only so many telecams away. Mm-hmm. That's what it says in the fucking translation. Telecam. Well, yeah, that's a fucking Klingon word. The woman doesn't goddamn say telecam. Isn't the Klingon word for telecam telecam? Yeah, for sure. It, it, it's pronounced Kelecom. Mm-hmm. And uh, the measurement is <laughs> the measurement is roughly two meters. Yep. So, I'm so uh, happy about this. <laughs> what they're what they're communicating is that they're about ten miles away. Just yes, so you know, yes. like and, and, what they're and, establishing. Honestly, kind of stupid to use 
a measurement that is two meters long to describe miles. But yeah, sure. But but yeah, again, this fucking chick speaks. Ter- they, honestly, they needed a Cali for this goddamn role. Right. Obviously, they have the pronunciation there. Then also a tactical issue here. The fucking the Klingons go. Oh, now we need to cloak. Why now? Oh, oh, now <laughs> now you, you have that. Just use the cloaking device the whole time. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to always be cloaked for the most part? That's the, the Klingon equivalent of the cat getting low before it attacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only Klingons have the cloaking thing. Uh, Romulans uh, Klingons and Romulans. Yeah. What's a Romulan? <laughs> Uh, cousins of the Vulcans. Oh, yeah. Keith, you have so much to learn. So many I'm wonders so to explore. <laughs> okay. Do they have any like magical nerve, not quite death powers? They do. Is there a Romulan ne- neck pinch thing? No, that would be silly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stupid question. Withdrawn. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, watch <laughs> Star Trek on your own time, Heath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, uh, so you got Kirk and, 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 uh, the away team, they're heading up to the Enterprise on the shuttle with the bad guys. And Kirk's like, uh-oh, we're going to be in some trouble now. They've just put up their shields because the, the Klingons are almost there and they're about to attack. And Vulcan, uh, Cybok is like, nah, we'll be fine. Fucking the Klingon, the fat Klingon guy they brought with him is like, no, Kirk's, Kirk's right. They're, they're totally going to kill the fuck out of you. It's, it's kind of the way we are. You, you see, thing. they lowered and started wiggling their butt back and forth. You can tell now that their <laughs> yeah. shit's about to hit the fan. Cultural, moral, moral relativism, you, guys, <laughs> you have to understand. Yeah. And, and the result is that Sulu is going to have to try and fly it in manually. And Callie, as a fellow lover of Star Trek, was it always this unsubtle with the gay jokes and Sulu? <laughs> or was it me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely believe that this was not Sulu's first time putting a pointy thing into the backside of another thing. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I remember being genuinely surprised by George Takei coming out. I remember being like, oh, wow. And like, oh, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. And now watching this movie, I was like, how dense was I? Everything (laughs) Sulu. Sulu turns to fucking camera and winks after every line he delivers in this movie. I mean, the shirtless fencing in the original series didn't do it for you. Yeah, right. I was going to say that. I feel like like I figured it out around then. (laughs) I thought Top Gun was a really masculine movie. It was a difficult (laughs) time in my life. (laughs) It was a very masculine movie. What do you you mean? It's true. That volleyball? (laughs) What's more masculine than volleyball? Hanging out with your bros. (laughs) Exactly. All right. So now they, they half crashed the shuttle. They do manage to make it in and everything, but but suspensefully. But the shuttle's half crashed. Everybody's unconscious. And then we have that classic movie moment where, oh, if only the good guy woke up first. But no, it's the bad guy. And as we're watching everyone wake up, I just want to point out the camera work here is so clearly just a guy wandering around pointing his camera at people. Well, you, can, like, you, uh... you can see a shadow damn near. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, we have to have a fucking William Shatner fight here. He has to fight with Cybok. <laughs> well, fight. <laughs> oh, Keith, if you enjoyed this fight choreography, you will love. So you must know this. This is vital to beginning your love story with Star Trek. All Star Trek fights are just. William Shatner grabs one side of a gun. The <laughs> alien grabs the other side of the gun. Left, right. Left, right. William Shatner does the only judo throw he knows on a stuntman. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so this is overweight Heath in high school getting wrestled to the ground by overweight wrestling coach slash physics teacher in high school trying to win a bet and losing. Yeah, yeah you get it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they wrestle for the gun, but now this time the gun goes flying off and Spock gets a hold of it. And Kirk is like, shoot this motherfucker, but like Spock can't bring himself to do it. Because we need 50 more minutes of movie. He exactly. Gets sentimental. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, later he explains, he's like, oh, I couldn't kill this guy because, you know, super secret reveal that's about to happen. But like, that's not the only option when you have a gun. Right? <laughs> right. There are other ways of slowing him down or otherwise fucking up his plans that don't involve killing him. So, well, I mean, like, in yeah. fairness, some weapons don't have a stun setting, right? But like, I mean, you can just <laughs> punch him in the face or <laughs> yeah, like... Exactly. And yeah. what's great is Spybok realizes that this doesn't make any sense because Spybok's like, ah, there we go, Spock. Uh, you've joined my team. And Spock's like, no, 
I just want to be in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to be an inconvenience to both of you equally. Yeah, right. That's an option. right. <laughs> so they send Bones and, and Kirk and Spock off to the brig because the three of them must always be paired contractually in this fucking movie, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And Cybok yeah. decides that Sulu and Uhura gets to be uh, get to be his next subbies. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. There's this really great moment where David Warner, who's like the the Federation ambassador guy, puts his hand on Sulu's shoulder and looks at him like, "Bro, it's about to get real weird." <laughs> <laughs> and he just walks off. <laughs> All right. So now we join Spock, Kirk, and McCoy in the break. This is where we learn that Cybok is Spock's brother. Even though that makes no goddamn sense, given what we know of Spock at this point in the fucking series. No. Even the other actors are like, hold on. He's your, like, brother, brother? Like, or like, like Uhura would use the word? Or like, brother, brother? <laughs> and the reason, that, and Spock, by the way, waves all of this, like, this is a total destruction of your character history with, oh, I didn't mention it because it's personal. Yeah. <laughs> Company time, personal time. You know what it's like. I'm Spock the fucking book. <laughs> this would be like if Batman introduced his brother Larry and he was like, yeah, no, I've never mentioned my brother Larry. He's an yeah. accountant in Des Moines. <laughs> right. Okay. No, but you're just like, if you've got something super useful to our plot, go ahead and tell it. Like, tell us all of it right now. <laughs> so it's like, okay. From now on, well, I will do that. but he now won't. On. But he won't. And he will absolutely over and over again in this on. movie. That's his whole <laughs> fucking thing: is to give everyone the information they need about four minutes too late. Yeah. <laughs> That's his fucking running theme through this film. And I love how Kirk is so verklempt; he has to press the toilet button for the chair to come out of the wall, and like, yeah, gotta sit down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, there's a sign above this chair in the brig that says, "Don't use this in space dock." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, first of all, if I'm in the brig, I'm totally using it, you know, right? Like, I'm already sure. in the fucking brig. What are you going to do? Throw me in the brig? Right. <laughs> but secondly, why? Right? Like, I understand that, like, back on the in the trains back in the day when the shit just fell onto the track. But why is that how it works in their fucking spaceships? <laughs> yes, the year is 2300. <laughs> and we have no better waste removal system. <laughs> They call it waste extraction. To be, uh, <laughs> got it. To be, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, Shatner's just using it because he's personally the actor tired now, and he's yeah. like, I <laughs> right. sit on this, this thing that pops out. I know we have this built in. <laughs> I wanted it to be slanted down like those ones that prevent people from like taking the fake shits while they're at work. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> hurts your legs a little bit, and you can't really relax. All right, so. Now we cut to Sulu and Uhura are coming ab- aboard the bridge, but they're on Cybok's side now. Apparently they were fucking brainwashed off screen or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that was what they were foreshadowing when uh, David Warner was telling Sulu that, you know, shit's about to go down. That's what they were foreshadowing. Right. And and then they, they, they tease us like a motherfucker because Cybok starts as like, you know, each of us has a secret pain and he's talking to Chekhov and we're like, Ooh, ooh, what's Chekhov's like secret pain going to be? And then they cut away. Oh, right? I'm so mad about that. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can totally, I totally know my V's from W's. I've just been faking it this whole fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason people like me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's the only way they can remember my character exists, yes. yes. <laughs> character is very important. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Say where? <laughs> you know what I meant. Yeah. All right. So meanwhile, so we cut back to Kirk and 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 Spock and I'm trying to break out of prison. And once again, we get one of these great moments where Spock gives him all the information just a little too late because Kirk's trying to break out and he electrocutes himself and hurts himself. And then after that, Spock's like, "Yeah, I'm actually the one that tested these brigs to make sure that they were escape proof." So I could have told you that was going to happen. I didn't. Ooh, <laughs> looked like. That electrocution hurt. Uh, quick bit of useful information we talked about this before. <laughs> There's no way out. I designed this and you will get electrocuted. Yes. <laughs> if you do it again. I mean, like, don't try to do it again. I'm a genius. 41's shame on me. I'm a Vulcan. I'm Spock the Vulcan. Also, they're wearing um, new footwear now. Uh, old-timey, strappy ski boots. Is that helpful <laughs> in space? Like what? Very much. Really? Oh, yeah. 
I did not notice the footwear. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, nor did I. Finally, at last, he's separate Google Doc. He keeps on each damn movie of the shoes in each particular scene pays off. <laughs> So. And if you become a $22 patron, you can get <laughs> Foot Only Gam, starring Heath Enright. It's a solo podcast he does. It's about the length of the regular show. <laughs> All right. So now, OK, they're underway. It's time for Cybok to give his big hero speech about why the fuck this is on the regular feed of Gam. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And I love how Kirk's like, I'm not racist, but like green in the face, green blood, because you're Vulcan. Oh, right? yeah. Because <laughs> he's sorry, I was going Spock. for a, I had a thing. I was going, I'm sorry. No, never mind. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Cybok explains to the whole ship that they're actually going to fucking Vulcan Kolob or something, the, 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 the heaven planet, which they call Shakari. Which, by the way, the they got by like it's it's a it's a take on Sean Connery. That's how they came up with yes. that name because he was originally Amazing. supposed to play Cybok. <laughs> oh, I thought it was like the planet of uh, the Nigerian vulture. Guy. Yeah, oh, so did I. yeah, no, that's See, why I looked it up. <laughs> I thought it was where Shakira came from. So we all were wrong. It's interesting. Oh. <laughs> so. I was I was so impressed. I was like, our universes have finally collided perfectly. This is amazing. <laughs> and I I knew it was Sean Connery. So <laughs> of course, <laughs> of fucking course, you did. How do you say Sean Connery and Vulcan? <laughs> A uh, Vulcan isn't a fully fleshed out language. Yeah, With sorry. a Vulcan accent. Yeah, you mean Klingon, you bigot. Oh, I can't tell the races <laughs> apart. No, I meant Vulcan. I don't know. You're, Maybe you're already you kicked out of same. a community you haven't even joined yet. <laughs> so, you're canceled. Uh, and right. as he's describing the ancient Vulcans, he says, they felt with their hearts. They made love with their hearts. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing that we made it this far. We eventually <laughs> figured out it was a whole, there's a penis thing and a vagina thing involved. But we, the heart thing worked for a while, I guess. Check out that girthy aorta. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also this amazing moment where he turns to Spock and he's like, okay, Spock, whose side are you on? And Spock's just like, no. He's the <laughs> angry, significant <laughs> other of this movie. And yeah, like, mm. right. No, go hang out with your friends. That seems nice. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm sure you'll have fun. No, go to heaven. <laughs> All right, and there's also, okay, so now it's time <laughs> for Scotty to break Kirk and him out of the, the brig. So they're tapping Morse code. <laughs> and and they're all, all three of them together are trying to like translate this Morse code. Now, this this never fucking works, right? This is like this is like when dumb writers put a genius into their fucking TV show or whatever. The Vulcan is sitting there along with them. The the smartest person in all of Starfleet is right there next to him. They're tapping out stand back in fucking Morse code. They get as far as S T A N D space B A C and everybody's like still like the puzzle. what's what's the <laughs> yeah. what do you think that last letter's going to be? Huh? Did you, uh, huh? <laughs> Count Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> Stand because. <laughs> that's not how you spell because. That's how he spells because. Come on, that's don't use the U there. That is how he spells because. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Noah. And I love how at the beginning of this, Kirk is like, I'm really out of practice, but I'm going to go ahead and catch all of this as it's coming in. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. It's the what? first thing they taught us at Stephanie Academy. <laughs> it's required reading. It's required reading. I wanted Spock to just be like, hey, uh, we can hear you tapping the Morse code. You could probably just talk yeah. through the wall. Just tell us to stand back and tell us what you're doing. This is dumb. But yeah, they blow up the wall and, and, and everybody escapes. And Scott and Scotty gets to be Scottishly excited again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, sorry. Last thing. Um, you can break through the walls very easily. I designed it. I feel like I should have told yeah. you before, but like... <laughs> Like an M60 that a 10-year-old would have. You can just get right through this. Yeah. It's a really small wall. All right. So now they've got to send an emergency distress signal, but they can't get to the emergency distress signal stuff in time unless somebody could free climb this dangerous turbo shaft. Well, not free climb. <laughs> ladder. Well, okay, but they set it up like that. They're like, they're like, yes. it, it would be a very difficult and dangerous climb. And I'm like, oh, okay, because then that's why Kirk was. No, it's a goddamn ladder, a very <laughs> difficult ladder. 
and we will watch them climb this ladder together for a while. <laughs> Oh, I also really enjoyed the hallway with the pipes running through it. That's like solid design work. And I'm just like, gosh, I wonder if this is a setup for something. <laughs> yeah, <we're right. laughs> what is a turbo shaft, by the way? Uh, it, it's the shaft that the turbo lift goes up and down in. Yeah. Turbo lift. Yeah, yeah that's right. the, the Star Trek word for elevator. Yeah. Okay. This is an elevator shaft. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's why they have the green and purple glow sticks. So it's a fun <laughs> elevator. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, it's all tying together. Sorry. Apparently one with no elevator in it because they get from the bottom of the ship. To oh, the top well, of the right. Ship right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You wouldn't want to use one. Well, the, was, the elevators yeah. don't break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they, yeah, they heroically go up a ladder for an awful lot of screen time, and once a goddamn again, Spock shows up. They're like fifteen flights up the uh, the ladder or whatever. Spock shows up. He's like, "Hey, you know what? I read it and I grab my jet boots somehow from above." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which means, yep, there is a unshown scene where Spock's like, "This is going to be great." <laughs> oh, hey guys, uh, what's going on? I was just uh, moon boots in. Uh. Also, where the fuck did he have those boots? But yeah, okay, I mean, maybe maybe that's a little personal. I shouldn't ask that. Right, and and he flies down to him, and he's like, "All right, everybody, grab on to me. I've got." The rocket boots, and they're like, go get us three sets of rocket boots. What are you talking about? <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? And he's like, oh, I thought that we'd do a big hug thing. Yeah, I think we know. needed a three-man Fun. hug. Yeah, and Bones is like, I'm not gay. Fuck you guys. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> he totally is, too. Gay fear survives into the year 2300. <laughs> All right, wait, and I have to point this out because, Kelly, you have the nerdiest goddamn note I've ever seen in my life of something they get incorrect in this scene as well. Oh, it's the best. So, you know, they're they're falling because there's too much weight, right? Yeah. All three of mm -hmm. them on this one pair of rocket boots. And uh, and Kirk's like, turn on the fucking rockets. And Spock's like, I can't control it. And he's like, fucking do it. So they go from deck 10 to deck 35 to 52 to 64, back down to 52. Wait, what? Back up to 77, then 78, and then further up to 78. <laughs> yes. And just, and just so we all, just so we're all clear, the Enterprise A has 21 decks. I love that you have that note at the end. <laughs> okay. In case you weren't, in case you weren't aware yeah. how bad they were fucking this up. Oh, maybe the star deck system is different. <laughs> yeah. to the numbering. So he I should have explained it just for you, because I knew you were going to have lots and lots of questions about what Callie just pointed out for everyone. I went to a website, which you will come to learn and love called trekbbs.com. Um, now, on Trek PBS, not only do they have a discussion of everything Star Trek, but they have these weird Star Trek apologists who insist everything is perfect. So if you, the listener, <laughs> would like to read someone violently defend that these numbers have nothing to do with floors and that this is not changed <laughs> by how many decks there are, uh, trekbbs.com has someone who's more dedicated to these numbers than I've ever been to anything in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> it's so... And by the way, we should point out, like, the end... The re okay, so they, they get on... They all get on the same pair of rocket boots and they have to hit the fucking afterburners on them or whatever. So the end of this scene is just a cartoonish, whoa, we're going too fast moment, right? Where they stop just in time. Yeah, I really needed that cartoon music again. Exactly, right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we are at this point inches away from Kirk just painting a goddamn train tunnel on a wall to fool the bad guy. So I need <laughs> a break. Himself. But first, <laughs> let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Can we harness enough high-powered photons to reanimate the dilithium crystals? Can we bypass the kiloquad interface modules and reach the core nanoprocessor unit? Will the tricyclic subsystems align with the positronic generator in time? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the sure-why-not conclusion of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Your mind tricks are never going to work on me, Cybok, I'm telling you. Come to me, Heath Enright. Reveal your secret pain. Never. No. Reveal. Reveal. No. Ho hold on. This this bakery is your greatest regret? Yes. Yes, it is. That bakery. Yep. J show me. Okay. Uh, okay. So you see that peanut butter square right there? 
Um, yes, yes, I do. Yes. So there were two when I was there and I only bought the one and then I got home and it was just like super duper good. The peanut butter square, the one that I got. And? And I could have had both, but I didn't. I only bought one. Wait, your greatest regret is not buying the second peanut butter square? The second peanut butter square, yeah, because I had the one and it was great. Like I just said, are you okay? Um, but yeah, so, you know, consider me brainwashed. I'm on your side now. That's, you know, you made it. Really you you know what? No, I, I, I think we're actually good. Oh, okay. That, like, that's it? You sure? Yep. All right. Yep. But, uh, you know, good to know about the, uh, about the peanut butter square. Oh, it's so good. I mean, peanut butter squares are delicious. Thank you, Callie. And like two or twice as such. It's math. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be a Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with Kirk, Spock, and McCoy sending out a distress call to Starfleet, or so they think. <laughs> and I am super impressed with that Klingon's English skills. Her Klingon skills, not so much. Her yeah, English skills, right. Not yeah. Much. <laughs> <laughs> Nails it. <laughs> yeah, so the Klingons are intercepting this communication and pretending that they're Starfleet command, which I feel like they'd have some kind of system, right? Like a, you know, like at the very least, a, a code word that you have to, something, but no. <laughs> when the plot doesn't necessitate it, there certainly is. Like there's a, like a, a, a command key or something like that that tells them, oh, this is definitely coming from Starfleet. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I thought I remembered something along those lines. Yeah. Oh, and then we get another one of those great, like, okay, so Cybox shows up right after they set out the distress call, and he's like, all right, all right, well, we brought the Klingons into Act 3, now it's time for me to catch you. <laughs> and he has to do another one of those historic, historic future lists, you know, where he's like, Columbus <laughs> right. proved that the Earth wasn't flat, and other thing that you heard of, oh, right, where, where they're like, Galileo. Yeah, and then they're like, yeah. and Schmog Flipper was never going to get warp drive to work but daddy did or something yeah he, he turns into the christian apologist in the comments section of every atheist video <laughs> yes like yeah. literally exactly yes, yes they... just being like science is fake i mean heisenberg uncertainty principle there you go we i mean we did discover the heisenberg uncertainty principle through science but you, you know you know what i'm saying it's just some stuff we know and not yet hey hey he, so i win i speaking of heisenberg i have to tell you this because i think you're gonna love it so fucking much the transporters have a heisenberg compensator yes <laughs> you. no you don't that's nothing they do they, they do it is mm. actually a thing <laughs> No, Heath. I'm going to ask you. every Trekkie <laughs> to describe the Heisenberg uncertainty principle to me before I... Oh I promised you there is a doctorate in physics out there just waiting for the day to explain to you <laughs> why they would need a, a, a Heisenberg Oh, inhibitor. I explain why. I, I can tell you why they need it. <laughs> <laughs> and he ends his little speech. He says, don't you see? You fear the unknown. And I want Kirk to just be like, no, I, I fear the rocks and stuff that are in the barrier. <laughs> yeah. To planet no. heaven? It's like a super real wall of lightning yeah. and rocks. <laughs> um, hey, we're flying in a fucking spaceship. We figured out how to detect real things a lot. We're pretty good at some science <laughs> so, now. Or did they? Spoilers for the did, movie. We did, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> so. We'll fire ourselves like an electron through a slit. No, you won't. It's nothing like that. It's not high. Stop. Stop. <laughs> so. All right. And then we cut over to sick bay. Uh, we get Scotty waking up in a horror just slathering his face with that vag or hers just like come on let's fuck let's fuck in this scene and it's like later i'll fuck you later damn it <laughs> yeah. and you can see in michelle nichols's face she's like all right fuck ah uh, i already did that interracial kiss thing a while like that was with shatner like 70s shatner which was kind of scotty is wrong <laughs> <now, though>. yeah <laughs> He looks like John Cleese's bread double. I don't know. Like, you, guys, you guys are kind of assholes. But I respect Scotty here because he understands that she's compromised and declines. That he yeah. did the right thing. No, that he exactly. did. That he did. Yeah. Okay. That he did. Positive. And, uh, okay. So now he, I feel like Cybuck didn't think he had quite gotten onto GAM yet. So now he has to go into this really long explanation of how, no, Shakari is heaven. Get it? 
heaven. Yeah. And this is where he turns into every white chick who went to yoga once or twice and discovers that all paths to the divine are valid. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, That's exactly what happens. I don't know if you noticed, but I bought candles since you last saw me. Yeah, you bought candles since I yep. last saw you. So, all right. So now it's time for Cybok to try to like brainwash all the, the, the remaining three main characters. So it's time for each of them to face their deepest, darkest fear. Or, or regret Ooh, or whatever. This is the best. <laughs> it's so dumb. It really is. So, okay. So first we're going to start with McCoy. Cybok sends McCoy into a doodly do about his dad dying. Apparently McCoy had to Kevorkian in his dad once. And Callie, tell me if I was alone in this. I was so sure that Bones was going to have too much pain. He was going to overload Cybok and he was going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> you hate so many things. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I I honestly in this scene I was just like I know what I'm supposed to feel here but like McCoy's kind of a piece of shit so far in this movie. Like I'm glad you had to kill your dad. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But what like the the lesson from Cybok here is like ultimate truth comes from euthanizing your dad. I, I, it? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not really sure. I thought I thought I thought Bones was just gonna be like, All right, uh, I smothered my dad with a pillow. You're still dumb. There's a giant wall. Yes. I don't see how this relates. <laughs> <laughs> I just love why we jump jumps in and starts doing his lines in the memory or whatever. I I, I would just change my lines. I I would do different words then and fuck the whole memory <laughs> right. up. But no, I, I, I also love there's this moment where he like he seems like he wants to go into the whole like, damn it, dad, I'm a doctor, not a but what his dad needs is a doctor and fucks the bit up. <laughs> so he just has to stop halfway through. My thing doesn't work. And by the way, we should point out Spock and Kirk are in this memory too. I guess. Just Watching. awkwardly in the background being like, should, should we be in his greatest pain? <laughs> Seems like it's kind of a personal thing. Maybe we can eat. Can, is there a way to arrange for a private pain? For each of us, <laughs> we'll pay extra we'll to, uh, if it's extra. Hospital cafeteria while he smothers his dad. I just feel like it's a personal moment. Some Jello, and then of course we learn that I could use some Jello. The worst part of it all is that the very next day they figured out the cure to the thing that McCoy's dad had. So, which is wah, not a great wah, pain. Wah. It's just unfortunate. Yeah, right. <laughs> Season two, Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, and then it's time for Spock to face his secret pain. He's like, I don't have any secret pains. I'm a fucking Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Cybok to be like, I know your pain, Mr. Spock. William Shatner's salary. <laughs> 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 Leonard Nimoy starts weeping. <laughs> And I love how Kirk actually tries to step in on this one. He's like, oh, no, this is a bad thing. I should probably try to stop this. And Spock's like, no, no, go ahead and let him do this thing that's worked on literally everyone else and is the entire reason we're in this shit to begin with. No, right. Just let him go. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> I can handle it. Right. So they doodly do. And, and Spock's like, no, I, I don't have any pain. I'm a Vulcan. So we doodly do back to his birth. Honestly, that would have been fucking hilarious if that was McCoy's biggest regret. Right, like given his fucking character, that would have been perfect. But then I was just like, wait, wait, is Spock a Scientologist? Why would his birth be his biggest regret? This makes I don't get it. Uh, but I guess his biggest fear was his dad being disappointed in him. Oh, he's yep. got daddy issues forever. That's something they explore a lot. Spock the Vulcan, one of the most iconic characters in all of sci-fi's deepest pain is my daddy never loved me. Yep. Yeah, that's legitimate. Like, there's not even a joke. That's just what it is. Oh, right. No, there is a that, that is definitely a through line throughout the series. So I'll at least give them that. <laughs> but then this is the greatest moment. It's Shatner's turn, right? They turn to Kirk and they're like, OK, it's time for you to doodly do into your biggest regret. And he's like, I don't know. No, because because <laughs> Spock is right here and will see me fucking him in my fantasies. <laughs> no, oh. William Shatner never admits he's wrong. I wanted so badly to just to. He doodly does into a YouTube video of him saying he's not going to do autographs anymore. Nope, that's in the future. <laughs> Never mind. Wait for it. Just a clip of Boston Legal. No! <laughs> I've been in other things, guys. <laughs> All right. So now, but but quick before we can resolve that scene, the, they come across the Great Barrier, which is the thing that keeps everybody out of the heaven planet. I guess. Planet. 
at the center of the galaxy. Why the fuck <laughs> not? So basically, they have to fly through the Bible Man credits and make it out alive now, right? <laughs> yeah. Jesus, is, I was like, man, Sulu and Chekhov aren't too sure about this space lava lamp they have to go through. <laughs> and we should point out, like, as far as this movie has had stakes that aren't related to the song Row, Row, Row Your Boat, these are the stakes that they can't make it through the Great Barrier. But then they just fly the ship through the Great Barrier. Gently down the stream. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Which means, according to the canon of this movie, nobody in the universe had thought of driving <laughs> into it. Just straight through. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, so good. At one point, Kirk is like, okay, but... What if you're wrong, Cybok? What if you're wrong about this? And Cybok's like, what if I'm not wrong? And Kirk's like, okay, but, you know, we'd get past a wall of lightning with, and then it would be more space. Just, this, it would, <laughs> but let's focus on my yeah, question. Right, I mean, like, that's more we'd be dead at the end of mine. <laughs> yeah, so, and then, okay, so they, they emerge from the, the Great Barrier or whatever, and, and we pan down everybody going like, you know, Vulcan word for heaven, Klingon word for heaven, Romulan word for heaven, and then our human going, heaven. Pans over to Heath, TGI Friday. <laughs> <laughs> potato poppers. They don't have potato poppers. And I love the moment where they, they put the camera right on Shatner's face and then the camera moves down and they're like standing there next to that pirate wheel and it says, boldly go where no man has gone before. And, and Kirk's hand is just gently resting on the plaque. Yes. And then that's <laughs> like, and then, and, and they do that thing where they play like three seconds of the really recognizable um, Star ba -ba -ba Trek theme. It's like, yeah, guys, this is what it's all about. And like, I can just imagine the shit eating grin on William Shatner's face when he, as the director, was like, yeah, this is what we got to do, guys. This is what it's all about. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it a wooden, like, Pirate ship steering because wheel in this spaceship. The original spaceships had wooden <laughs> spaceship <laughs> handles. Okay. No, because it's the space navy. Like, why not be a tiller? I don't know. Like, what? Why? Because <laughs> it's the. It wouldn't be electronic. No. That, well, so if the power goes out, you spin that thing really fucking fast, and it'll come back on. No, no, because it's 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 like they're harkening back to the navy, and, and which is what Starfleet, you know, emerged from, sort of. Yeah. All right. So yeah, they. they Fly through now. Now they've got to like okay. So they've flown through the bad special effects to get to the planet. Now they have to take the little shuttle and fly through different bad special effects to get to the planet itself, right? To get to the surface. <laughs> yeah, but and and just as they're starting to land, they like lose control of their little shuttle. And I wrote in my notes, Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> and I and I wrote in my notes, Eli beat me to the Jesus took the wheel joke. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the title like star trek 5 jesus takes the wheel of the enterprise yeah. like that's really yeah. exactly what's happening yep. yeah all right so yeah so they land on the shuttle or they land the shuttle on the planet where god lives and this is where we see the shuttlecraft is named copernicus which i thought was very neat the yep. other one was yep. named galileo i don't okay. know if you noticed that mm -hmm. <laughs> yes i did notice i know that you noticed that i guess i didn't know if anyone else <laughs> noticed come on that. come on you know <laughs> did you notice that i noticed that is what no one meant <laughs> And it's actually pronounced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that is their word, Heath. Because <laughs> <laughs> you say, <laughs> you can say <laughs> 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 so, and I love this moment because this is so me. If I was in this situation, everybody's got to be like, Kirk. Don't bring your phaser to meet God, dude. Yes. Dude, please. <laughs> Let me just All grab right. a gun in case I need to shoot God. It's not a great look. It's not a great look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we'll be fine. God's super, like, completely not violent in the Bible. So this is Yeah, no, we'll, we'll be know. fine. Yes. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, yeah, we, we cut back to the Enterprise. And by the way, we've got a solid, I think, four minutes here of just... Every named character staring out the window reverently, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's and we need that because they're all too enraptured to notice the approaching Klingon warning system going off, right? <laughs> yeah, the camera does that long zoom in where it's like, huh, they're trying to tell us something here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, oh, we get to watch Cybok do the full Gary Busey run? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, 
Hey, Cyborg, we're going to meet God. Can you turn the run down a bit? Just, you know, just crank it down. We're meeting God, and I feel like the flailing arms is a little much. <laughs> oh, and we should point out, too, back on the Enterprise, Scotty is busting his ass trying to fix that transporter for the big finale, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'll be important later. Uh, we should point out that, like, they're like, hey, Scotty, um, we're about to meet God. Do you want to see? And he's like, I'm fixing the espresso machine, woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. I mean, get it fixed. So, yeah, right. <laughs> right. All right. So back on the surface of the planet, nothing happens, right? So they get to the planet. They just wander around for a second. And then Cybox just like, so, uh, hey, God, are you up? Ooh. And then everybody has to give him the whole, like, uh, you know, maybe God's just at the grocery store and he'll be right back speech. But just then a big giant God earthquake kicks up. So it's, it's OK. We're fine. Yeah. For those 10 minutes, it's picking your buddy up from the blind date that didn't show the Star Trek <laughs> <Yeah>. movie. <laughs> huh? You want to get fucked up and go to a strip club? Yeah, let's get fucked up and go to a strip club. I'm going to fight a bouncer. You are going to fight a bouncer. <laughs> Do you want me to just punch you in the face now? It's so much better if we do it like this. <laughs> no, I want to get punched in the face by a bouncer. <laughs> All right. All right. And then, so, yeah, so there's a big earthquake and everything, and they start walking in this direction as though there's something there, but there's nothing there. So, basically, they're just walking towards the source of the suspenseful music. I, I like to feel like in those moments in movies, it's like they go left and the music gets quieter. They're like, nope, it's right. It's to the right. The music's <laughs> getting more suspenseful that way. <laughs> I'm hearing violins when we go left and like no strings at all to the right. <laughs> right, like that's right. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, so this is the the moment where God shows up. This is where I walked out of this movie in theaters. I want to point out, <laughs> I was 13 goddamn years old when this came out. It was the first <laughs> movie I ever walked out of. Oh, see, and this was where I walked into this movie. <laughs> People, people were like, no, you got to watch Star Trek V. And I was like, man, they were like, they meet God. And I was like, ah, oh, man, you had me. <laughs> so, yeah, so the big giant God pillar shows up. He shows them all the various God faces. And they're like, nah, yeah. nah. We go, through, we go through Planet of the Apes God. Yep. Then we have the you have no power here God from Lord of the Rings guy. Yep. We have some kind of Egyptian looking God. And then just like a normal looking Klingon. Yep. For some reason, yeah, before just, we get oh, to Klingon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all look the same to me. So. I wanted them to go oh. all the way with this montage. They're sitting outside a dressing room. God comes out. Mm-mm. Then he comes back out again in a different God yeah, face. Pretty woman yeah, is playing that's in the, the background. One. <laughs> yeah. Does a sp- big mistake. Huge. Oh. I love how impactful God expected this to be, and it wasn't at all. They were like, oh, are you seriously God? He's like, one voice, many faces. Here are five of them they're like oh five yeah (laughs) five faces well and also eventually he settles on santa fucked the cowardly lion yeah i (laughs) i said why is why is god's beard curled like a girl's hair at prom (laughs) (laughs) all right so they're like hey god great to meet you and he's like yeah uh cool you guys came on a starship can i have it (laughs) yep (laughs) <laughs> all, they're also like, uh, we, we sought your infinite wisdom, God. And <laughs> God has this moment, which is really the writers having this moment of being like, cool, I, I am God. In, uh, I thought I could just like wing it. I should have really <laughs> thought of like an infinite wisdom thing to measure twice, cut one. No, no. <laughs> do I have um, infinite wisdom? Yeah, I do. Uh, penny saved is a penny. <laughs> Never put off till her? tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so, all right, and then yeah, he's like, but he needs their starship, right? And Kirk's like, wait a minute. Yeah, Kirk is Kirk is a great skeptic here. Somebody should give him a YouTube show. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <that's fantastic. laughs> he's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be omnipotent. And then McCoy, all the way by it, and he's like, dude, be nice to God, be fucking yes! be polite. Kirk, you are embarrassing us in front of God. <laughs> yes. Right. It's like my wife at every family gathering I've ever been to. <laughs> it's so good because God keeps asking questions and Kirk's like, no, no, I'm just going to stop you right there. You keep asking questions, but you're omnipotent. 
why are you asking questions? And then he gets shot with a laser and God's like, okay, now do you believe I'm God? And everybody's like, no. <laughs> now you're just, you're a guy with a laser. I mean, we have lasers too. We have that. No. I mean, to be fair, God who lasers you is the most accurate God we have ever seen on God awful movies. Yes. Abrahamically <laughs> speaking, this absolutely tracks, right? So. Yeah. We poke our heads out of the shuttle. That's God, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we read the book. I'm going to be in here. Quick, he's going to give you a plague or something if you guys keep fucking around. Is there a bouncer here we can fight? <laughs> <laughs> Hope none of you guys are Jewish. Oh. <laughs> and I love that Kurt Probably, gets another, yeah. like, you know who the fuck I am moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. like, who is this creature? <laughs> so, but Spock is like, yeah, hey, you know what? This is a bullshit God, y'all. And Cybok is like, oh, well, now I will have to sacrifice myself so that you guys can all get away. And they're like, not, not really, but fine. We're done with this character anyway. You're annoying. So, all yeah. Right. <laughs> so he walks in and I love this because he's like, he's like, I guess he's going to do the share your pain trick that he did with McCoy with God. <laughs> it's just God smothering God's dad with a. <laughs> <laughs> How badly were you guys hoping for a doodly do to Mormonism? Just, do I'm sorry. I was drunk and then there was this asshole in upstate New York. Uh, I told him treasure could be slippery. Why would anyone buy that? <laughs> you know, they're hiding a hundred billion dollars. I don't want to get it. <laughs> And I love that visually we step into an 80s fantasy metal music video here. Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. And then our, the Enterprise shoots God with a torpedo. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll fuck you right up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk's like, fire the missiles. And Chekhov's like, but sir. And he's like, this movie might kill the franchise anyway. So who gives a shit if we die? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so now the good guys run back to the shuttle. Apparently, this was supposed to have been this huge, awesome sequence with rock monsters chasing them and everything, but they just didn't have the budget for it, so they had to throw all of that out at the last minute. Or actually, I'm sorry, if if I remember correctly, they did film a bunch of it. It just looks so goddamn shitty that they cut all of it. Exactly. <laughs> and, what, and what we get is a pillar of smoke and a voice going, you. <laughs> and I just desperately needed a beat to drop and backup dancers to come out. <laughs> oh, if God turned out to be Dead Mouse, this is my favorite movie. <laughs> All right, but they, so they run back to the shuttle. The shuttle's not working, but luckily Scotty has just enough transporter juice to teleport everybody up except Shatner. Right. Yep. <laughs> So they get Spock and, and, and everybody back, and then the Klingons attack just then. Because the Klingons want Kirk. Just in time to keep this movie going for, what, like 12 minutes longer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but the fuck, okay, we'll get to the resolution. It's so goddamn stupid. Okay, so now Kirk is going to have to use his rock climbing skills to escape from the wrath of God, full circle, motherfuckers, <laughs> all the way back around. So he gets to the top of this mountain or whatever. God's angry at him and he's about to kill him. But just then the Klingon ship shows up and shoots God in the face to death. <laughs> Star Trek kills God the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the Klingons teleport Kirk aboard their ship. It turns out that the fat Klingon from earlier is going to make this Klingon apologize as though he was your grandma making you thank someone for bringing you water. And it's it's literally the bit Heath and I do about, like, say you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you mean it. It is. <laughs> That's the resolution to the whole fucking movie. <laughs> it's the Klingon apologizing for him. Oh, we shot God in the face. No, sorry. I'm sorry. I am sorry about this stuff before. I really enjoyed that, like, old broken down Klingon gets a redemption arc. That's yeah. Just, <laughs> totally unexpected. Also, and then they're like, and and by the way, who was shit sitting in the gunner's chair when we shot God in the face? Spock. Right. Except it was the captain's chair, which is. <laughs> oh, <fun>, okay. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid movie. Fantastic <laughs> chairs. Thank you. Also, do you need to point out that I think when they kill God, 
the sound that God makes is the same sound they used when the cat stripper died. Is it really? Like, I'm almost positive that's a copy paste. I'm almost positive. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I was expecting the fucking Wilhelm scream at this point, okay? Honestly. <laughs> You're right. So, okay, and then we have this fucking <laughs> this scene now where the Klingons are their buddies now and they're all hanging out and having a drink. Yeah. This is my favorite part of all Star Trek shows, movies, to document whatever it is, there is no Star Trek movie unless there's an awkward drinking and having lunch together with the aliens you were just fighting scene where it's like, so, forehead wrinkles. Are those your foreheads? <laughs> like, you know that's a forehead, huh? No? Is that offensive? I'm sorry. I have a lot of... Uh, weird. Klingon don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite. All right, so check and, and also by the way, we we have to establish that Chekhov really wants to fuck the Klingon lady with the bad accent for some reason. <laughs> right, and Sulu is pretending to go along while actually thinking about wanting to fuck Chekhov. Yes, right. Yeah, very exactly. much. Yeah. <laughs> they also have amazing whiskey glasses. That was the only thing I took away from the scene was the big Klingon guy. He's drinking whiskey out of it's it's like a giant sword grip. Plus a whiskey glass on top of it. And I need one of those. That's awesome. With like a whole like ornate grabby part plus a tiny little whiskey glass. Yeah, for sure. Two votes. Thanks for telling me that right after Christmas, man. I had to get you cash. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, I'll go get one. Get cash. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. And so and then, of course, we have to wrap this up with McCoy wondering if there really is a God. And Kirk saying, well, maybe he's here in our hearts where the Vulcans made love back in the day or, you know, whatever. <laughs> And maybe the real God is the friends we made along the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's learned something very important today. And also there's this great homoerotic moment between Kirk and Spock where Kirk is like, you know, well, I lost a brother once, but I got him back. You know, and that's, of course, a reference to Star Trek two and three, except mm -hmm. <laughs> except Kirk did have a brother that died in right. the original <laughs> series. Yep. What a cold-blooded fucking thing for him to say at this yeah. moment. <laughs> I meant Ohura, brother. That's you know, brother. Up, right? brother. <laughs> you guys are making it weird. <laughs> like, brother, brothers? <laughs> All right, so, but, and then, of course, we have to end the movie with Kirk, Spock, and McCoy finishing up that camping trip bef from before. I shit you not, we end fading to black on them all singing, row, row, row your boat. Yeah! And, and again, they can't keep it nope, together. No, they do no. not. This is the closest they got to them getting it together. And that is why it's the end of the movie. <laughs> so good. Seven shooting days later, someone was just like, okay, it's over. We're not doing it again. We're done. We're done, everybody. <laughs> All right. So I, I have a serious question here. And I want to appeal to the Trekkie and half Trekkie that we have on the call. After this movie... Why was Star Trek still a thing? Like, why did this not kill the fucking franchise? Well, it almost did. And the only reason they were going to do another one was someone came up with a concept for like a Starfleet Academy movie. So they didn't have to pay the original cast. Uh, so they could be like a low budget. And that was kind of how they were going to slide it in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, th so they wrote this script that was about all of them in their Starfleet Academy years. And uh, apparently everyone hated it. And I couldn't actually find, uh, aside from that, you know, they all came up with the concept of Star Trek VI, which is like, you know, Chernobyl happens in space and all of that. And uh, Nicholas Meyer, I guess, just got it made. Like, I did a bunch of research and I wasn't able to find, like, who, like, made them convinced to do it. Aside from saying that, like, you can't spend a single more dollar on Star Trek VI than you did on Star Trek V. And, like, the studio was super nuts about that. But I think it was a combination of that and the fact that uh, there was like a big anniversary coming up and they wanted to like give it one more shot, I guess. OK, well, mm. yeah, I guess that makes it because because the next generation had come out right before this movie. Right. Yeah. About a year before. Yeah. OK. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. OK. And I mean, speaking for me personally, Star Trek, Star Trek will be that weird high school relationship that should have ended way sooner, but didn't because push comes to shove. I'm going to hang out in the Star Trek universe, even if it means a fist fight of God and singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Okay. Well, I guess I just, that's it. <laughs> Want to be back on the Enterprise. I don't really care. All the other fiction's bad. Make other good <laughs> make other good yeah. movies if you want me not to watch this <laughs> twice in theaters. <laughs> Jesus. Eli, are you talking about your high school relationship with religion? 
that should have ended way earlier? Talking about Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Kelly, thank you again for hanging us out with us today and for answering all of his questions so patiently. <laughs> if our listeners <laughs> wanted to hear more from you, uh, remind them where they should go. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. I'm very accustomed to answering uncomfortable questions about things that are very Oh, that's true. Yeah, that is um, kind, of a, kind, of, kind of something you're an expert in. Isn't it? <laughs> First bullet point on my resume right there. <laughs> Patrons, stay tuned for 45 minutes of us asking about the they pronoun. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and my vagina, it's fine. I'm, I, can, I, I run the gamut. Uh, so my show is called Queersplaining, uh, queersplaining.com, anywhere you can find podcasts. All right, and I, I want to throw in a plug. It is a very, very well done show. It's right up there. Like a, a, a top, it is a top notch. I know some podcasts are not like you know they don't really go, you know you know what I'm just going to cut this because there's no way for me to finish this without insulting everybody but us and Cali. So, uh, <laughs> Mark, it just I'll, I'll keep that one close to my heart. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> what we're saying is it's not cognitive dissonance. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going crazy. <laughs> This was just saying nice things. <laughs> so, you know, Joe Rogan opposites. <laughs> right. Yeah. Check, check him out. All right. So, and of course, we'll have that linked on the show notes. And uh, hopefully we can have you on again sometime to do something that isn't the should have been death knell of the Star Trek franchise. It's fine. I mean, you, you, it's, it's all good. I mean, you have the trans person to talk about trans stuff. You have the Star Trek person to talk about Star Trek stuff. I understand how you guys operate now. All it's right. <laughs> <laughs> tokening is what we call it okay that's right. that is going to do it for our review of star trek 5 the final frontier of course but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to coax ourselves into doing this again so eli tell us what's on deck well i am on vacation so i've left you a lovely gift behind from the makers of the accidental bar mitzvah and gramps goes to oh, college no. comes the pro abstinence movie God damn it. love waits oh i'm so ready for that I mean, the title, I like the title. Kind of, kind of <laughs> All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 230 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Callie Wright for suffering alongside us. And an even a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And thereby early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing of the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Need and The Skeptocrat, which are available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Brian Slotnick of People's Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Henry and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Kirk and Spock put on rocket boots, and they fucked all over the skies of Yosemite. Khotnoshtak pao chap de vitbek Klingon avwit lukom Lukom Na dep vot vash at dak Ma jach lach at Jach Jang avwit Le chok bet chuk Rume I don't want to go now <laughs> you gotta sing Don't You Forget About Me. Yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> the Star Wars franchise would take another 13 years to get this bad. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry would spend the rest of his life explaining to bigots who liked his show that he was not, in fact, on their side. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gene. God is dead, Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.